Hi, I'm Dave Salter Adams of Operation Eagle's Wings, honoring all who serve and leaving no one behind. Very excited about this new building behind me. It's been open for two days now. It is the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Chattanooga, Tennessee is described as the birthplace of the Medal of Honor. We're going to be talking to the executive director of this new facility about how that happened and why they're so proud of this building. Now, they stress to us that this is not a museum. This is a heritage center because they want to take the character traits of the Medal of Honor recipients, sacrifice, courage, and teach those to the next generation to, to see where you fit in to the story, where you fit into the heritage, where we can take the lessons of these Medal of Honor recipients and pass those on to the next generation of Americans. We so much need that in this country today. Join us. And by the way, if you're in Chattanooga, Tennessee, stop by the uh, Tennessee Aquarium right to my right here. And of course, check out the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center here in Chattanooga. I'm Dave Salter Adams. This is Operation Eagle's Wings, honoring all who serve and leaving no one behind. With me is Keith Hardison. He is the dir executive director of the Charles H. Coolidge National Medal of Honor Heritage Center. And uh, Keith, Welcome to uh, Operation Eagle's Wings. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Behind us is a picture of Kyle Carpenter, and it kind of exemplifies what you're trying to do with this Heritage Center. We'll define that here in just a minute. The quote from Kyle Carpenter is, I want my story to help others see what's extraordinary in themselves. Now, before we started this interview, you told me that you didn't want this to be a museum. You want it to be a Heritage Center to pass on the legacy of the character traits we see in Medal of Honor recipients. That's, that's correct. Uh, our focus is not so much on the artifacts, although we have first-class artifacts, but it's on the stories of these men and one woman and the character traits which compel them to do those uh, rather extraordinary actions under extreme circumstances. What are your hours? We are open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, Sunday, 1 to 6. So when they come in, they also, in some examples, they see actual medals of honor, but they see personal artifacts. And the story becomes very personal because we're seeing spoons and things that these people used. Absolutely. Uh, in most of our exhibits, we recreate in one form or another the environments in which the actions took place. We have some very key artifacts that relate to those individuals. And then we talk about uh, those characteristics, those six characteristics that all Medal of Honor recipients possess. These are individuals who do not have to stop and think in a moment of crisis what to do. They have the character, these characteristics within them that allow them to make decisions. And all of those decisions uh, to the last man and woman are uh, those that favor their country, their comrades, over themselves. You're also trying to take this and really making an effort to take it to the schools here in Tennessee. Yes, absolutely. We have for several years now uh, had the character development program uh, that was uh, created by the Medal of Honor uh, Society and Medal of Honor Foundation. And we use that in local schools in local youth and family development centers to teach character, to provide our young people, who many of whom badly need lessons in character, a framework in which to make decisions about themselves and how they can better themselves, their towns, their state, their nation. Right now we're in this beautiful room. It is the permanent exhibit for the uh, National Medal of Honor Heritage Center here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. With me once again, Keith Hardison. Keith, this is a beautiful room. Well, thank you. It, uh, uh, this one is about 7,000 square feet. Uh, it is a very immersive exhibit. Again, our focus is to have, rather than to see our stuff, it's to be a part of our stories, learn the character of those Medal of Honor recipients, what prompted them to do the valorous acts that they performed, and then how can those characteristics manifested in us change how we interact with society and how we can improve ourselves, our communities, our schools, our nation. 
your design here is not to be a museum, but actually to be a giant classroom. Let's talk about that. Yes, uh, this with our uh, changing exhibit area, our Hall of Valor, this is a 19,000 square foot classroom on character education. It's all about character. And so much in the news today, we see characters in the news, but what we're talking about here is character. The thing that prompts men and women to do heroic actions to save others and to serve others. Yes, in fact, we describe uh, our Medal of Honor recipients, all 3,508 of them are uh, ex ordinary folks doing extraordinary feats of valor under the most extreme of circumstances. They don't have the time to stop and think, to uh, have a council meeting with someone to make a determination. The character that has been uh, inculcated within them prompts them to act with love of country, love of citizens, uh, love of their fellow soldiers, patriotism first, and always at the very end of the line, themselves last, which is totally in opposition with the prevailing attitude in our country. We live in a me generation. They don't, and they don't act that way. So often, we see it in the news every day, it's the me generation. We, I think that was uh, Pepsi-Cola or something, uh, some, some product that used that. It's the me generation, and, and it is today in, in America. But we are the United States of America, and we have so many examples here of men, and we'll talk about one woman, one uh, citizen that is, was honored by the National Medal of Honor Society for her heroic actions. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we need character in our citizens today. The traits for a National Medal of Honor recipient are patriotism, citizenship, courage, integrity, and sacrifice. And you see that emblazoned in white all around this room with the parachutists coming in the middle of the room. There's one, uh, you may have seen the movie about Sergeant York. There's a story over there on a display about the man, the single man who captured uh, over 300 German soldiers by himself. He took out a lot of, he took out a lot of soldiers and, his, uh, and he captured a lot more. In fact, his commander, uh, when he came back to uh, headquarters, uh, said uh, to York that I hear you've captured the whole German army, to which York responded, no, just 128 of them in addition to those that he had killed. By himself, courage, sacrifice, valor, men and women that did the right thing, did the good thing when called upon to do it. We also have civilians that are honored with me, Keith Hardison, once again. Tell me the story about Molly Bradley Hudgens. Molly Hudgens is a middle school counselor in Ashland City, Tennessee. Uh, one day a student came in uh, with a weapon, he was intent on shooting up his school. Uh, Molly, who is a fine Christian lady and, and trained counselor, uh, talked him down, if you will, from committing that act. So on that day in Ashland City, there was no gun fired, there was no one injured, there was no one killed. And she demonstrated the same kind of courage. She did not have time to think. It was these same characteristics that, in, that imbued Medal of Honor recipients on the battlefield to be courageous. They prompted her to be courageous on that day. And as a result, the Medal of Honor Society, which are those living recipients of the Medal of Honor, award uh, every year a certain number of what they call Civilian Honors Medal. They are, in essence, their civilian counterparts and she received one of those medals. Uh, she has been a very strong uh, supporter of the Charles H. Coolidge National Medal of Honor Heritage Center and is frequently with us, and it's an honor to be in her presence. Why is it called the Charles H. Coolidge Center? Well, we have one, one of the longest names ever, we'll admit that, but there are two reasons for that. Charles H. Coolidge, uh, who is the who is the oldest surviving Medal of Honor recipient uh, and is one of two, only two, surviving Medal of Honor recipients from World War II. There were over 400 originally. There are only two left. 
uh, is a gentleman of strong faith, of courage, of impeccable integrity. He had a unit outnumbered four to one near the French-German border, and he withstood uh, a German force that was four times his number and was backed by tanks, and he still held his position until he was ordered to withdraw. That courage, and we feature that in a film that we do here, he is literally lives 20 minutes from this facility, and because of his nature, we honor him. Uh, we also call it a national because the Medal of Honor is a national award. It is a national medal. And so we're saying, in using that name, that our facility uh, tells a national story with extremely strong and broad local roots. And this here, the story of Molly Bradley Hudgens. Now, the Civilian Congressional Medal of Honor, Citizens Honor, does this display change from time to time? Uh, no, if we, uh, we certainly, if we had another from Tennessee, we would add this uh, to that. Uh, this may be expanded uh, in terms of change. That would be the way we would go about this. We are in the recreation of a World War I trench. Absolutely. This is a trench uh, German soldiers would have occupied, not unlike Allied soldiers. We have a uh, machine gun, maximum machine gun, that uh, children can aim, see what it was like from this end in terms of defending position from the other end. We have a, another uh, form that we will put in of an American soldier from Tennessee charging this, so you can see both ends of the, uh, of the action, if you will. And uh, that is another part of our effort of rather than just uh, merely looking into a case, you can be part of the environment in which these actions took place. You can actually feel what it was like you were there. Literally. this. Uh, you are there in, in virtually every part of this museum. It is designed to be an interactive, immersive experience. We want you to see. We want you to read. We want you to feel. We want you to do. It's a comprehensive experience, uh, which has been proven to uh, enhance learning. What can people do to support your vision? They love the vision of teaching this to the next generation. They love the immersive experience. Maybe they, maybe they never do come here, but they catch your passion for sharing this vision. How can they help? Well, we've got three or four ways that you can help support the uh, Medal of Honor Heritage Center. One, you can, uh, if, even if you can't visit, of course, we'd love for you to visit, but if you can't visit, uh, you can still become a member, either a Patriot member, which is a lifetime member, or we have various degrees of annual membership in which people can support us. We also have, you can make a general contribution, and if you like, you can mark it to the Character Development Education Program so that those funds received will be used directly uh, in terms of educational experiences for our youth. Also, we have a uh, Bricks of Valor campaign that you can uh, purchase. We have bricks at $150 some larger at $1,000 and then the largest at $5,000 that you can memorialize uh, a veteran, uh, an ancestor, someone you admire, and the money contributed there goes to support the museum. And folks will see them as you come uh, up to and into the front doors of the Heritage Center. We've been talking to Keith Hardison, who is the executive director here of the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center in Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's right next door to the Tennessee Aquarium and to visit both facilities. Bring your kids, bring young people here so they can learn and see examples. Uh, we've used the word hero in the news a lot these days. And uh, often we think of in today's society, we think of a hero as a basketball player who made 40 points in a game. Here, we think of a hero like Desmond Doss. We think of a hero like Sergeant York. We think of people that exampled courage, integrity, citizenship, and patriotism. Characters that we need, character 
that we need in today's society, and we desperately need that. So we really appreciate you taking this uh, facility and creating this immersive experience where people can reach out and touch a piece of history and also learn more about a hero. Yes, and as you've said, uh, there's, um, there are heroes. They don't wear capes and tights. Uh, I would say everyone who uh, is a first responder or everyone who has served in our armed forces are a hero. Here we focus on the greatest of the greatest and those are the Medal of Honor recipients. There are others in this world, as you've said, the term hero is tossed about. Those are celebrities. There is a very distinct difference in terms of the life and character of heroes and of celebrities many times. Keith, thank you for the tour of the facility. and We hope to, hope to have you come on down and see it. Absolutely, we'd love to have you come to Chattanooga, the home of the, Na of the Medal of Honor and of the Charles H. Coolidge National Medal of Honor Heritage Center, and we'll give you an experience that you won't soon forget. Thank you. I'm Dave Adams, Operation Eagle's Wings, honoring all who serve and leaving no one behind.